Well, hello and welcome to John Down and the Real World Channel. I am John, your host, and today we are very blessed and fortunate to have with us a very special guest, Mr. Rod Steele. You may know him from different channels. He's a patriot. He's a uh, treasure trove of financial wealth and overall business knowledge, and he's been involved in the Global Reset for quite some time. Rod, welcome to the program. Thanks for being here. Thank you, John. It's a pleasure. I always enjoy uh, your company and, and uh, the interactions that we have. Yeah, likewise. It's uh, It's been interesting to watch you from a distance on other channels and on your own. And now being in this position, it's 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 fascinating because you just get so many more nuances one-on-one -on -one than you do kind of at a distance, you know? So um, as you know, tonight we're going to be talking about the global reset, uh, specifically about the currency portion of which you have so much robust knowledge. And I'll start you off with some easy softballs. Uh, starting first with Iraq, uh, I know you've got quite a lot of information to share on that. Let me just kind of set you up. Uh, as you and I were talking here the last day or so, we uh, it's now been uh, public knowledge in the community that uh, Iraq's uh, proxy Iranian um, minister, Hal Abbasi, has been forcibly removed from parliament, in part because his term was up and in part because he was corrupt. My first question to you is, do you take that to be, since Iraq and the U.S. copy each other, do you take that to be a good sign of corruption being removed for the public citizens there to see? It's huge, and, and and I'm so glad to see a Sadani in there doing everything he can to make it happen. And now he's got he actually got the U.S. Treasury on his side, and mm -hmm. we're gonna we're gonna knock this thing out. And I think it's gonna be pretty quick. And he's just one example of all the Parliament people that they basically cleaned up. Uh, not to mention the bankers. A lot of those Parliament people owned the banks, and so you had it crooked on both sides mm -hmm. because you had the same people operating both of them. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, as far as our military is concerned, it, it would seem to suggest that their role over there is playing a different function from more of a combat to sort of a support and a administ not say administrative, but more of a, uh, a redundancy, training. we'll say, training and redundancy. Can you touch <laughs> on that a little bit? Yeah. You, you've got, uh, you know, they, it's an interesting uh, dichotomy as far as politics over there between Iraq and the U.S. because we do have a very controlling nature over their money and the entire world's money, and that's why it's backfiring in our face right now. But mm -hmm. uh, the other side of that is we also have the world's largest landing strip there. We have the world's largest embassy there. We have the most number of staff people in any embassy right there, and we've got around 3,000-plus military that are staying there, um, as you said, not under the guise of, of warfare, but under the guise of, of support and training and uh, teaching their military basically how to defend themselves and uh, as as well as the citizens. And so, um, yeah, we're not ever, we're not ever leaving Iraq. I mean, they they can say go away all you want, but we're, we're too we're too deeply invested to ever go anywhere. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. Thank you for that. Uh, also pivoting a little bit since you brought up the citizens, it's my understanding that they're going to get, we don't have to talk about rates or anything, but just in terms of their compensation is going to be a little bit differently than what we as Iraqi currency holders here hold stateside and throughout the world and the oil revenues because of what we're waiting on with Erdogan to come in. Do you have a sense of when Erdogan might be coming in to sign the oil and gas law? Oh, soon? How do you like that word? <laughs> it's relative. Yeah, I mean, it, it It all is going down step by step in clockwork. I expect it to all be almost rapid fire. And I expect that to be anywhere between the rest of this week and the end of this month. Um, I don't think we're going to see anything in December. Uh, either from the U.S. District of Corruption or from their parliament, because everybody's off. In the last three days of December, all the banks get audited. So I, I don't see anything happening in December. So I think we're looking good for all of those items, no matter what the label we put on it, um, between literally now and the end of November, which is what a lot of people think, and I can list those later if I get the chance, um, and then, of course, uh, if, if, it, if it doesn't happen, we know January 1, everything changes. And so it, the thing is, you can't change everything January 1 if you didn't have all these other steps in place prior to that. Exactly. exactly. So, so we're running out a month fast, and and I and then they're moving fast. I mean, I've honestly never seen governments 
act as quickly as they're acting right now. So I'm, I'm actually very impressed with what they're doing. I'm more impressed with what they're doing than what we do here in the U.S. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, they copy each other, but certainly they're, they're, uh, they, at least they're looking like they're trying to make an effort, you know, to move things forward. Uh, what do you, do you think it's kind of already done and this is just a formality playing itself out in front of scenes? Yeah. I mean, you've got, um, you've got deep state personnel on both sides that are, that would love to stop it and prevent it. And of course, that's what the Israeli conflict was. It was the deep state acting out on October 6th because this was supposed to go on October 7th. Uh, just like 9-11 got blocked in the U.S. for the prosperity programs and a number of other reasons that they didn't want things happening then. Uh, that was going to be the initial introduction of Nasara back then. So here we are 20 some odd years later trying to get that put in place. Um, the people that I was working with back then that were going to bring us free Tesla electricity, I had a contract for that uh, back in the late 90s. I knew the senior national sales director. I was friends with the owner of the company. And the senior national sales director was found dead in his living room two weeks after the fact. And the CEO just disappeared. Nobody knows what happened to him. The company disappeared. The phone lines were dead. The office looked like it never had anything in it. And those people were responsible for demonstrating these Tesla uh, generation systems operating entire stadiums with one box in the center of the stadium, uh, about equivalent to what your AC compressor would look like in your home. And um, I mean, it, it was a done deal that the power companies had already said, you know, we're not going to allow this. And they said, fine, we'll just give it away. And that's what ended up happening to them. This time we're going to get it through. But it was unfortunate that, that uh, how far people will go to stop things. I've had colleagues that, that were eliminated. Um, so is the deep state real? Absolutely. Are they trying to stop it? You better bet you. But we've got them this time at where we want them and we're going to win. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, no, that's a great point. Thank you for that as well. Um, so looking at this, Rod, and it, it's interesting, right, because we're seeing so many things, as you said, transpire that have never happened before in the 20 some odd years that this got started in, back in 03. Uh, what do you make of them doing a three-year budget as opposed to the past? What What do you make of that? I, to me, it says they're going to have so much money available at one time that they can afford to make that kind of projection and not be concerned about it. Whereas in the past, you know, you had to, like all the rest of us, most of us that have a budget, it's like, okay, how much have we got this month? And how much have we got going out this month? And do we have enough to cover what we've got going out? That's the way most budgets are. Unless you're the United States and you just sell bonds to anybody that'll take them and, and then throw that debt onto your children and grandchildren. And I feel sorry for mine, but I, mine are going to be fine. But, you know, a lot of the rest of the world, what we're doing to America, the way we've done it, where are we at now? 30, how many trillion? <laughs> well, Bill Holter's estimates is actually closer to 300 trillion that they're really lowballing the, the true rate of it. If you back it, yeah. they sell them. If you don't count all of the other the things that they don't count, you know, like, right. like our inflation rate, we don't count food, we don't count energy, we don't count um, mm -hmm. the other one that's major. I, I've got it in my notes here. But anyway, the three major things that we all spend money on aren't included in our inflation rate. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. Was, that was the other one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I Actually, think they can do a three year budget because they don't have to worry about the money anymore. Yeah. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, but that actually brings up a good point because we're talking about the rate of inflation because we aren't currently, as you know, backed by anything in our currency, but that will change along with Iraq and the totality of the world, as you know, in the East-West reset. With that in mind, what do you think is going to be primarily backing their currency? I know they're, I believe they're number five in the Middle East in, in gold and number 30th in the world. So do you think it's going to be a combination of assets in terms of gold, silver, or just purely gold? Right. No, I, I think they've got enough gold being the size of Iraq that is to do it. But obviously their bread and butter is their petroleum. And I'm sure that that will be a big chunk of it as well. You know, you've got other countries in Africa that have unbelievable earth metals that are just worth fortunes. And it's, so it's going to be different in every country. But the bottom line is they're all going to have equal asset value. And so uh, how they do it and choose to do it 
is up to each individual country. Um, but I, I don't think they're going to have any problem there. They're one of the richest and, and it won't be an issue because that brings up the point we talked about earlier where they've already got six uh, smart cities outlined and, and floor planned in Iraq and they're already breaking ground on the first one. And they, it, the, in those six cities will all, I'm told, be equivalent to Dubai. And so, uh, you know, you, you've got a fabulous future in front of you. And no wonder yeah. our contractors are chomping on the bit to get in there. Definitely. And you have all these other major companies and countries, obviously, trying to contribute to the infrastructure because they want a piece of the action as well. And and Chase and J.P. Morgan got in early. <laughs> yep. Yep. They sure did. Uh, I believe they're, they have a building in Baghdad they're going to build that I think they're trying to make one of the tallest buildings in the world, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Well, their, their presence is there. It's not at that stature yet, but it will no, be. But <laughs> yeah, at some, point, at some point, next couple of years, for sure. You had mentioned earlier in, in, the, in the beginning of our discussion that uh, that you had a lot to share about Iraq. So I'm going to kind of open the floor to you for anything you'd like to share. Okay. Let, let me lubricate my vocal cord damage here. <laughs> no problem. We're talking with Rod Steele here, Patriot, Truther, and uh, uh, extraordinaire with the global reset, specifically as it relates to the currencies. At this point now, Rod's going to just talk about whatever miscellaneous addendum items he'd like to add to the equation as it relates to Iraq. Yeah, uh, we actually had Sadani uh, saying on TV uh, this week that it was coming in the next couple of days and guaranteed it by the end of the year. And so uh, that, that, he's putting that out on television, folks. Uh, one source said that if it doesn't happen in November, it won't happen to January because audits are done in December when the banks are closed, especially the last three days of the month. So as of January 24, there's no more U.S. dollars in Iraq. Um, other surrounding countries, oh, here we go, are uh, actually putting out that the information in their news media. Uh, there's big meetings in Baghdad with the World Trade Organization finalizing details so that they can announce Iraq as part of the WTO. Uh, you can't really be a successful part of the WTO without a new uh, valued currency. Um, this requires an international currency to trade with others, uh, WTO member countries. And uh, last Wednesday, we had Sadani had his meetings with the US where they worked out how uh, other countries' currencies could come into the country. Iraq uh, transformed dinar uh, to the, so, did I say transformed? Transferred. Iraq <laughs> yeah. transferred dinar to surrounding countries and those countries in turn moved their currency into Iraqi banks and included it as part of their reserve currency. That's the first, folks, so that's that's huge. Uh, I'm giving you a lot of big, important facts, and I'm running across them like they don't matter, but, but these are major significant steps. Um, they set up the bank to handle their significant import-export business through. Uh, that's another one, because they've cut out all the dollars everywhere else, so there's, there's got to be a legitimate place that they can do it. Uh, the U.S. Treasury authorized 10 more banks to accept dollars with more coming up to 13 to work directly through the Federal Reserve, again, as we spoke about, through Chase and Citibank uh, to get their dollars, thereby cutting off the smuggling, uh, cutting off the crooks and the CBI and the crooked banks and banksters that uh, own them. Uh, the only way to get U.S. dollars is now through the U.S. Federal Reserve through those two banks. Um, according to an Iraqi source I had, the dinar was supposed to show up on Forex Tuesday, um, and it didn't. And uh, it was an international currency. U.S. banks are being told in meetings that it's in process, it's happening, and the rate will be higher than expected. Um, Al Sudani is holding Iraqi bankers accountable uh, based on performance, and he wants them to present their bank development plans uh, within a month and show the level of accomplishment that they have achieved during that 30 days. Uh, Ernst & Young has presented a plan for the rest, uh, restructuring of the Rafidian Bank. Uh, they're on high alert in Iraq. They have optimistic expectation uh, with the decline of the dollar against the Iraqi dinar. They continue to have some attacks in Iraq, so prayers for their safety. Um, their inflation is actually getting weaker uh, now at 3.6%. Uh, much better than ours if you factor back in our housing, energy, and food costs, which we no longer include. Um, 
I don't know about now. Our gas here in, in Dallas Fort Worth, is, we had a Walmart that's at two fifty nine a gallon this week. It was most about two eighty nine. Oh. Most everywhere else, I don't even know where you live. <laughs> where are you at? California. Okay, so you're, what are you paying? Four, five, six? Just filled up today. Four thirty nine. How much? Four thirty nine. Fourth, oh my gosh, yeah, you you guys, that's why y'all have the, and talk about inflation. I couldn't, that's why all y'all people are coming to Texas. <laughs> well, I'm not, I'm not from here, thankfully, but, but yes, but I'm, I'm making a mass exodus as soon as possible. You're, you're <laughs> flooding our freeways, I, but we, we can't build them fast enough. And by the time we finish them, they're, they're overcrowded. And yeah. so we're right back where we started there. We're, Fort Worth has been gaining 10,000 new people a month for two years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and we're we're the small city in the metroplex. <laughs> yeah, you are. Uh, where was I here? Okay, we've got. Uh, they're putting in new governmental measures to tackle the exchange rate differences, including knowing your customer procedures, which we've always had, but this is new to them. And uh, the advisor to the minister for financial affairs said Iraq has the highest reserves in history, um, continuing or contributing to Iraq's improved price stability in the exchange market. Uh, that's huge. Another big one. 22 more people have been arrested for corruption. So we addressed that early in the show. And so now we're, we're seeing the totality of that. Uh, and that's by far not all. They've done a lot more before we got this week. A local US bank teller, just a little quick story, had dismissed the currencies uh, completely in the past saying that he just heard that uh, they will be exchanging them soon at a local uh, bank here in the U.S. Mm -hmm. and so mm -hmm. it's down to the teller level now. We've we've known wow. regional VPs, regional managers knew about it two couple of years ago. Uh, then we had the branch managers that were knowledgeable, but nobody else in the branch knew anything about it. Now everybody in the branch is being trained, and a lot of them are being laid off because they're just not going to be needed under the new digital system. Correct. Uh, so anyway, we've got here that uh, the guys I, I mentioned earlier, I said a lot of people think we're just minute to minute here. That includes the U.S. banks, Iraq, the WTO, the U.N., and Reno, uh, where our new treasury is. And so those, those are all on the same page. Uh, we know that everything's still on track and moving forward this week. Uh, the banks have been updated again today. And um, Iraqi sources are thinking as possible as early as this weekend. Uh, there is this one from an Express Tribune uh, article uh, stating unshackling the Iraq dinar, talking about how Iraq has to plan to uh, take themselves away from the U.S. oversight. And uh, they're aligning themselves, of course, with BRICS and new emerging global commodities. And part of that process is strengthening the dinar, that, strengthening the dinar by removing the three zeros. And so uh, there, these these articles now we used to get them on Epic Times and, and smaller, you know, more patriot oriented news systems. These are now coming out on worldwide news sources and talking about exactly the same things that we're expecting: uh, strengthening the dollar, de-dollarization, return of commodities, backing their money. And so uh, that that's that's the long and skinny on on. Uh, Iraq and what their situation is. Sure. Thank you for that, Rob. Great, great articulation of detail. Folks, I want to direct your attention to two key things that Rob mentioned that we talk about on our pro our, our podcast all the time. A new digital system. It is going digital asset back. He's just confirmed it. And two, the banks, because we stress a lot about the banks. And you know, I deal with uh, some wealth managers and, and branch managers here in the area at some of the uh the remodel Wells Fargo centers, right? Where they have, you know, already been set up for it and tasked for it, like you're saying. And uh, you're ahead of us in the aspect that, you know, some of the managers know, some of the wealth managers primarily know, but a lot of the tellers still don't know. And like you said, same thing here, they're being kind of uh, downsized because, you know, just like the mortgage division is being removed because there's no more need for that uh, going forward. It's 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 funny, isn't it, Rob? We're, we're living in an age where we're seeing what was an asset is now liability in the aspect of mortgages, right? Banks, that was their bread and butter. Now it's obsolete. You're going to be doing everything from your phone and your recliner. You don't need to go to the bank. Um, you know, I, I lost my bank account due to that multi-state check fraud scam I got tied up in. Uh -huh. And um, 
I, I had to quickly shift everything. And I live now on PayPal and Cash App, and I honestly don't need anything else. <laughs> right. And yeah. that's the way the new system's going to be. Yeah, except I would just take it a step further and say that, the, as you know, the goal here is to be our own central bank with our own currencies, you know, with certain bonds, which we'll touch on in a minute, you know, metals and, you know, certain things like that. Uh, where we'll be able to, I believe, do a bartering system. You and I will be able to barter together without the need of the middleman anymore. And I'm good at that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll bet you, I'll, I have a feeling you are. You, you seem I, pretty crafty. My key like, success in business was I could take two or three parties, usually two, I'd be the middleman. I, I used to broker these uh, high yield trust, uh, high yield trade programs that required 10 million minimum to be a part of and the, the government said didn't exist but yet most of congress was all involved in it and you got like 100 percent returns per day and stuff um and it only lasted a few days and you were out and a percentage of that went to humanitarian projects but believe of course when you've got people that are that wealthy and i'm talking a lot of these people were billionaires um they they've got the attitude to go with it <laughs> you know? yeah. and it's like each party wants everything their way, you know, which isn't necessarily the benefit of the other person. And so right. my job was to bring the opposing party with the money to the opposing program that would only do it if you did it their way and get those two minds in sync with each other. And I was pretty good at it. <laughs> yeah. Well, your sales and marketing obviously played a pivotal role for that. So that's that's great. Um, just a couple of other uh, key topics we'll go into because you've really done a great job with the, as far as the dinar is concerned. And um, we'll just touch on it briefly. I'm also excited about, obviously, like you are about the dinar. I'm also very, very excited about Vietnam because I have felt for a long time that that's the more powerful currency in the aspect that you can get more bang for your buck. Now, I know that, that you'll touch on that in a minute, that that rate has changed more favorably. But if my, my theory to my subscribers has been this, if you took a thousand US and bought dinar. I don't buy it anymore, so I guess. No, no, I no, right, right. <laughs> for those for the, for those who 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 are still actively doing that, who are, are maybe late to the game. Uh, but then you take a thousand of Vietnam and you could get anywhere from 15 to 20 million, depending on the spread and who you're dealing with. Exactly. So, so you, you, you know, when you when you you know dollar cost average it out, it's it's you get a lot more bang for your buck with that. But I'm very excited about that coming up on the heels of Iraq. And I was just wondering if you could just briefly touch on, because uh, I believe what's going to happen is after Iraq goes, right, China, Taiwan is going to happen, and that will free up Vietnam to power up their dong and silver. Um, are you sort of intimating the same thought with, with, with yeah, Vietnam? Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a domino effect, and it's going to go right down the line of the 27 countries that we know for sure in the first basket, even though we have 209 that have signed off on the gold backing. Uh, they're not all quite ready to go yet. And right. so those other 27 will go. I, I totally agree that VND will be right on the uh, heels of, of Iraq. Uh, I think they're currently selling it. And people always ask me that. They say, well, which one's, you know, the best? Well, the best depends on you. You know, I, I always approach that as an investor. It's I, I cannot get inside your head and know what your psyche is to, as to what is for you the best choice. Right. The Rocky Dinar is obviously talked about the most, so you're going to get the most information on that. And if that makes you feel good and you've got the extra thousand to, to spend on a smaller amount uh, and you have enough of it that you're able to negotiate a better rate, perhaps, fantastic. Um, but for the ordinary guy that, uh, you know, just is, you know, trying to buy groceries and make a car payment and, and rent the house, um, I always said the BND is the way to go because, you know, it's an ongoing accepted currency everywhere. A, a Rocky Dinar wasn't even sold in most places except in airports and exchange centers. Uh, may, even the major banks that we're going to be exchanging at refused to handle it, including Wells Fargo, even right. though that the people at the top were already the lead bank for it until um, Chase took over. But the people at the bottom didn't know anything about it, and they weren't selling it at all and said that it was a scam and all that kind of stuff, which it wasn't. There were some scams, but they had nothing to do with the currency itself. That's how solid a bet the Vietnamese dong is compared to all these other things out there. They're an ongoing, regularly operating country that just happens to be at a lesser rate than what they're going to be at. And so it's solid everywhere you go. Yeah. Uh, every, there's other things out there that are going to have a higher return, 
but they're also a lot more risk. And that's, that's the common formula of investment. You know, what is your reward versus risk ratio? And so it depends on each individual. But the Vietnamese dong is absolutely the highest reward for the least risk that you could possibly get. Absolutely. Um, this is a, a surprisingly uh, common question that I get fairly often, Rod. Maybe you can give your take on it. Sometimes a lot of my subscribers want to know, do you have any specific denominations that you would recommend? Does it make a difference or is it just a preference? On the VND? Uh, the dinar, the VND, any of them. Oh, yeah. Well, obviously, the, the larger you can get, the easier it's going to be for you when you go into the bank. I mean, but mm -hmm. it, they're, they're going to have to take them all. There's, there's you know, there yeah. was for a while, people used to think you could only get the uh, 100 million and 50 trillion on uh, 100 trillion, Zim. 50 trillion Zim. on them. And that's not true. Yeah. Uh, any, if, as long as it's what, 2008 AA in that category, uh, they're going to exchange it. Now, talk about one that's worthless and not lose anything except for this redemption. Yeah. And so those people that the intent of that is very much like the prosperity programs was back in the 90s, early 2000s. It's intended, or they hope, they're not, I don't think they're gonna make you. I've heard everybody say you're gonna be required to, just personal opinion from people I'm sourced with, nobody that went in for a, um, that had uh, safekeeping receipts. Oh, SKRs? Yeah. Um, had to had to give a program outline of, of their humanitarian plan. The, toward the end, some of them were asked, "What do you plan to do with the money?" You know, and I'm not sure that that was so much a decision-based process as it was just curiosity. But um, I do know they would like us to. I know there are like 150 approved federal programs that will be provided a list of if mm -hmm. you like to put funds towards something that's already operational, which if you're not used to being CEO of a large business operation, I would strongly suggest you look into doing that if that's what you want to put your money toward because they're already approved, they've been uh, researched, they know they're solid and they know what they're doing and you don't probably. <laughs> you know? right. if, it, if, if it's a, something that you're just passionate about and you really wanna do that, more power to you, go for it. I have some like that that I want to do, but by far there's others that I will be either um, collaborating with others that I have friends, you know, that we're all involved with, or that we have mutual interest on, or doing the the bank choice like like what they're going to present us with. So you've right. got options. Absolutely. Yes, you you actually segued into a great point, which is my last uh, question for you for today. Uh, until our next time uh, about Zimbabwe, it's yeah, it's perceived priceless, but we we know, excuse me, it's perceived worthless, but we both know it's about to be priceless. And one of the things that excites me so much that really no one's talking about, maybe they either don't know or don't want to know, uh, is Nelson Shamisa, who's a fellow believer like us, is the rightful president over there, just like Trump is over here. And he has been very adamant, like a lot of countries in Africa, like like the Sudan and like you know Mali and many other ones, about going back to the gold standard since they are one of the, if not the most wealthiest and gold rich countries in the world. So I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on Nelson Chamisa and it seems like he's going to be coming back sooner than later. Well, I'm, I'm in total agreement with you and in the support of, of that, that. Absolutely. You know, we've already know they've got their gold coin coming out and that's the legitimate one for the country now, as opposed to what we're doing, which is basically for humanitarian benefit. Uh, at least that's what I think they hope we'll do with it. Uh, I, I, incidentally, speaking of which, I did see people that got funds clawed back that just went out and went crazy going spending the money on you know personal interest and stuff. And I'll be honest with them because my home and several, I'm a car fanatic. Um, I have a lot of that already picked out. I'll tell them up front, you know, look, you know, <laughs> compared to the total, it's minuscule. <laughs> <laughs> and so there'll be plenty left over for, for accomplishing the things that they want to accomplish. But you mentioned the Zimbabwe thing. I don't know if you remember it or if you're a superhero uh, fan or not. I am. I've, I've got all the movies. I, I'm going to have a nice, big, rich looking theater in the home. But mm -hmm. and I'll use it. <laughs> but one of the sure. movies, the action heroes, that the first first one that came out was Black Panther. Did you see that? I, I did. Yes. Okay, at the very end of the movie in Black Panther, the the, the main leader guy from Zimbabwe uh, 
gets up and speaks to the UN and he's mm -hmm. talking about how wealthy their country is and that they have uh, if you you know follow the movie through they find this unbelievable uh, resource of gold and so he's discussing all of that and then the movie ends and so it's like it kind of leaves you hanging but the reality was I had sources in Hollywood that told me they said there was 10 more minutes of that movie that our alphabet soup guys cut because before it was allowed to be go out because they actually went into an explanation of what was fixing to happen with Zimbabwe and they said we don't want the public knowing that they're not ready for it yet and said, you've got to cut it. And they, and they said, you can go this far, but no further. And I, right. I thought that was a huge confirmation of uh, what we're looking at. <laughs> Absolutely. Cause, cause we know with Hollywood, it's all about predictive programming. So they have to tell us what they're going to do or what they've already done, but they can do it under the guise of entertainment because most people wouldn't take it seriously. It would kind of just go right over them. So right. you're absolutely Absolutely right about that. Uh, we're almost done uh, for today, Rob. I just want to mention a couple of quick things, uh, so I'm not remiss to mention it. Um, if you do like the channel, you like the content and the great people that we're interviewing and providing all this robust information, please do like, subscribe, and share uh, on Rumble, YouTube, and our Telegram channel, where you can see we do source our information and vet it out. All those links will be in the description. I get at least a couple times a week. I'm sure you do too as well, Rod. Uh, queries about where people can get foreign currency. There's a lot of great options out there. We just make a recommendation. The decision is yours. We'll leave that link in the description as well. Um, Rod, uh, before we pray, is there any last things that you would uh, like to share with our audience, last musings? Well, I just invite you all to come over to my X account and uh, peruse that. Uh, there's a lot of good information there. There's a lot of shows I've done that you can watch there. Uh, I give more detail like I did on this one than I do on the site itself. So you have to listen to them to actually hear what I had to say. Uh, that's just one way I hope that you'll come back and keep listening. But uh, if you do have specific questions for you or your family as regarding this redemption and stuff, please feel free to DM me and we'll talk about uh, getting together and, and seeing if that's something that we can't uh, satisfy for you. Great. Thanks. Thanks for that, Rod. Okay, let us end on a prayer and we'll finish up. Abba Father, Yeshua, we thank you this evening. We thank you for this interview. We thank you for making it happen. Uh, you have removed all issues or delays or distractions of the enemy to try to get this accomplished. I pray that it would reach the eyes and the ears of God's people, that they'd be blessed with this information. They would discern for, those, for themselves what is true and that they would be good stewards of this blessing uh, because it is coming from you. You control the timing, you control the outcome. And all we need to do is trust you and be faithful. That's all that you ask. And I thank you for Rod tonight. I thank you for his graciousness and his patience, um, his long suffering and his persistence and his good, positive, enthusiastic attitude to stay in the fight for himself, for his family and for the overall community's benefit. And I pray that he would get good rest tonight and that uh, others would be able to be blessed by the knowledge he has provided. And we just, we thank you for all these things. And we pray this in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And my ADD kicked in and forgot to give the name of the site. On X, oh, yeah, Patriot Rod Steele. The X account, <laughs> Patriot Rod Steele. You'll find no E on the end. Yes, yes. Patriot Rod Steele at X. Well, Rod, thank you so much for the privilege uh, and, and your patience through this process. And uh, we look forward to speaking with you again in the future. It's been a pleasure. Good night. God bless. God bless.